Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to an updated patron, Dennis R. Thank you for choosing to support the channel. From Climate Control on X, the new Twitter in Baker, California, we get some pictures of a new Tesla mega charger for the semi. Rodney did say he was gonna go back to the location to check the specs on the cabinet, but at the time of recording, he had not yet posted that. Here's some good context on the size of the cable, but I definitely wanna know this mega charger is on a pallet. There were plenty of complaints today about the location of this mega charger and people wondering how a Tesla Semi was going to access this easily, but I'm imagining these are not the permanent locations they'll be moved in the future, hence why they're still on this pallet. In terms of specs, it is kind of surprising we don't have anything official yet. The baseline has been one megawatt that's been thrown around, but hopefully in the weeks to come, we can get some more clarity on that. I went back and found this image from Giga Nevada where Tesla Tesla was initially testing some of these mega chargers and you can see here are the pull through lanes that we would expect for a Tesla semi mega charger site. In Tesla's 2020 impact report, they did say they're in the process of developing a mega charger network at trucking rest stops in the US and Europe. But with mass production volumes of the Tesla semi delayed until later 2024, it then stands to reason that the rollout of this mega charger network will be slowed slightly as well. And we also still have uncertainty when it comes to how Tesla will handle the megawatt charging system, the MCS or the standard that the Charin organization has been in favor of. So unfortunately, the question remains, are we going to have another NAX CCS situation, but this time for the trucking industry? On the supercharger front, specifically when it comes to V4, in a recent planning document for Tesla in a location in Swindon in the UK, here we have Tesla officially proposing EV charging units, ultra rapid V4 superchargers, 350 kilowatts. And it says all charging units are universal and can be used Used by any EV user. And if you keep scrolling through the document, you find this image of a V4 stall with, yes, a screen right in that area, right below where the cable goes in. It's still too early to tell if this screen is going to be on all V4 stalls globally or just in specific regions. And we have Esther reporting the third V4 station we talked about last week is now up and running, this one in France. This site has eight stalls total. Still waiting on the V4 rollout in the United States. Tesla with a physical recall of 1.3 thousand vehicles in the United States for misaligned cameras in the Model S, X, and Y 2023 versions. The pitch angle of the forward-facing cameras may not be aligned to spec. Tesla service will provide an inspection and potential adjustment to any affected cameras at no cost to the customer. If your car is impacted, you should get a letter in September or you can try out the VIN recall search linked below. Tesla continues to add new attorneys to its litigation department, the latest member, Frank Bannon, who will join Tesla as the Associate General Counsel of Litigation. This really doesn't mean anything. When you read through documents like the 10Q, you can actually see all of the pending litigation going on with Tesla, and as they continue to grow and more consumers are impacted, of course, that will naturally grow with time too. Add in comments from Elon like there will be blood like we heard last year, and this should be expected. CERN put together a nice tweet talking about the potential valuation of Tesla's autonomy and robotaxis. James Dauma quote tweeted it saying this, you can pause and read if you want to. The short, he loosely co-signed it. And I'm sharing this because Elon responded saying, you understand, but few do. I hesitated to share this because all models are wrong and I don't want anybody out there kind of expecting these numbers. However, what he got from his model, a what if value of $329 billion today and 9.4 trillion in 2035. Again, pause if you'd like, but here are some of the assumptions going into his model. One important one, excludes all other revenue from energy, insurance, supercharging service, dojo, and bots. This little combo really just highlights the tension that we're all aware of. We have Elon, Tesla, and us understanding the potential of robotaxis and autonomy that may be closer than most of the world thinks. And then on the other hand, we have Wall Street where no one is willing to go out on a limb or stray too far from the Wall Street consensus, especially when the numbers really are nutty and don't make a whole lot of sense. 
And yes, I know you can debate each and every one of these assumptions, but the overall point remains. The gap between what Wall Street is willing to model and what really might play out over the next 10 years, that's where the real alpha lies. Tesla Boomer Mama shared a German article, went ahead and translated the image in. Here are a few takeaways. Chinese manufacturers are becoming more present in Germany. German manufacturers have too few affordable electric cars. The Germans do not have large sales volumes of EVs and thus cannot buy supplier parts in large quantities. If you buy little, you have worse prices. On the other hand, the Chinese buy a lot, they have other lower labor costs in China, and they, like Tesla, are very fast and dynamic. Whereas in Germany, you need a long time until decisions can be made. Then they go on to talk about VW's legal structure and the union and why things are slower at VW. The main point, the German auto companies need to spread more widely abroad, China is important. To stay in Germany and comply with German laws would be the worst thing the auto industry can do. Shanghai Let's Meet shared a new video of the Tesla factory in Shanghai. They talked a little bit about the food options, but we'll focus on the production in the factory. We even saw a fish tank. Our guide told us the fish were raised using treated water from the factory, which is great for the environment. <laughs> 最新的一个数据啊there was of course a bit lost in translation. No, Tesla can't make a whole car in 40 seconds, but rather a car rolls off the line every 40 seconds down from 45 before. May not sound like a lot, but it's over a 10% improvement. We have a small Chinese account talking about some recent interviews of some fund managers, specifically in the autonomous industry in China. So I went ahead and translated these images. First, the Ministry of Industry and IT expressed its support for level three and above self-driving. Many cities have relevant policies in place like Shanghai. In addition, recently, an overseas car company with FSD, that would be Tesla, expectations are that it will soon enter China. And they went on to talk about the current FSD testing in North America with over 400,000 drivers. As we've learned with Elon, soon can mean a million different things, but FSD expected to be licensed by the Chinese government soon. To be clear, this licensed is more than likely just meaning approved, not like Ford licensing FSD from Tesla. The weekly insured number for Tesla China, 7.7 thousand. Plugging that in for week three, quarter three, the comparable number week three, quarter two, 10.3 thousand. Pause if you'd like, but the first three weeks of quarter three are behind the first three weeks of quarter two. The first three weeks of quarter two, 29.7 thousand. The first three weeks of quarter three, 20.9 thousand. But remember, Elon and Tesla told us, quarter three, we may see a slowdown due to factory shutdowns for upgrades and other factors. As Holmars pointed out, depending on your location, when you customize a Tesla in the configurator, they may show you similar vehicles in inventory. They're not doing it where I'm located, but there's not a whole lot of inventory here. Indonesia is finalizing a new set of incentive to attract investment from EV manufacturers. The government is still in talks with companies like Tesla and BYD. The incentives will be benchmarked against those offered by regional rivals, Thailand and Vietnam. No details given. Luhut Panjaitan said tomorrow we're going to finalize incentives that we're going to give to any EV investment in Indonesia. Luhut said he'll meet with BYD BYD execs in Chengdu in China this Thursday, and then he also has a meeting scheduled on August 3rd with Elon Musk in California. From the Department of Energy, the latest count for Tesla supercharger ports, 20,040, and remember all of these other companies adopting the NACs only have access to 12,000. California has the most stations with 366, not ports, stations, followed by Florida, 136, Texas, 128, New York, 82, and Pennsylvania, 66. So just a neat little breakdown of the supercharger stations and ports by state for the first third. Here is the second third, 
and the final third along with the totals. It's pretty wild how two words from five years ago are still causing Elon so much trouble. Elon yet again planning to ask the Supreme Court to consider whether the SEC overstepped its authority related to the funding secured case. Elon's lawyer confirmed today that Elon plans an appeal to the Supreme Court. In a press release today, Chevy has announced it will introduce a next generation Bolt, flip-flopping on its prior decision to end production of the Bolt. On the Q2 call, Mary Barra said, our customers love today's Bolt. It's been delivering record sales and some of the highest customer satisfaction and loyalty scores in the industry. We will keep the momentum going by delivering a new Bolt and we will execute it more quickly compared to an all new program with significantly lower engineering expense and capital investment by updating the vehicle with Altium and Altify technology and applying our winning with simplicity discipline. Timing and details should be announced at a later date. But they said 70% of buyers who are trading in a vehicle for Bolt are trading in a non-GM product, so a big source of conquest for GM. Through the first half of this year, GM has sold more than 33,000 Bolt EV and EUVs. Barr also said, we can't build enough Bolts right now. There are new difficulties with that tech, disclosing unexpected delays in producing Altium battery modules because a supplier of automated manufacturing equipment has been struggling with delivery issues. For Altium cells right now, the bottleneck is going from the cell to the module. GM still intends to stop producing the legacy bolt at the plant in Michigan. That factory will be retooled to produce electric trucks. In the first half of this year, GM produced 50,000 EVs, but in the United States, GM has sold fewer than 2,800 EVs using the new Altium battery pack. If you watched the channel last year, you will know that this was supposed to be the year of the Altium movement. Despite the challenges, GM said they still plan to make 100,000 EVs in the second half of 2023. Zooming out though, honestly, it was a pretty good quarter for GM in terms of profit and revenue. They beat expectations. However, when it comes to EV production and those expectations, GM missed the mark. That's part of why GM stock is down today. On the Altium module automation delays, Mary Barra said she's been disappointed with the unnamed supplier and she's been personally involved trying to solve the problem. She said GM was surprised how little progress the supplier had made. This right here highlights why Tesla's vertical integration is so important, specifically with 4680 cells in the long term, avoiding having to work with suppliers at least being less reliant on the number of suppliers. So a new Chevy Bolt with Altium Tech is coming. We just don't know anything about it yet. Well, we're uh, literally at, a, I'd say, a bit of a make or break moment for, for the industry when it comes to EVs. You got a lot of capacity coming online. You got a lot of, a lot of new products. For example, GM is launching their EV, so their Silverado EV, their Blazer EV, and importantly, their Equinox EV. Um, you're seeing inventories for EVs about double what it is for internal combustion engines. So, you know, even though we set a record for EVs in the in the second quarter, uh, EV demand is not keeping up with production. And I think the the most important launch for EVs right now in the industry is coming up in the second half of this year, which is the Equinox, which is Chevy's second best selling model competing in the highest volume segment. And they're targeting a $30,000 price range. So you're taking the price issue off the table for consumers around EVs. And so if GM isn't successful in ramping sales of that, not only is GM going to have a problem, but the industry is going to have a problem. So it's going to be interesting to see how that product is accepted in the marketplace. As long as we have Tesla separate from the industry... I concur. Here we have some data from July for the California New Car Dealers Association. California is a bellwether of sorts for the nation at scale and over the first half of this year, battery electric vehicle share hit 21.1%. Here we have some different segments year to date through June. As you can see, overall top selling light trucks, they have the Model Y in this category at 74.7 thousand or an 11.9% market share. 
And for the top selling passenger cars, the Model 3 has topped both the Toyota Camry and the Honda Accord, more affordable vehicles, coming in with 41.7 thousand registrations and a 14.9% market share. On the right column, the dark blue bars are for California, the state, and the light blue is for the USA. So Tesla now just 1.1 percentage point behind Toyota in terms of overall market share for light vehicle sales. Also great to see Rivian growing 197% year over year in California year to date and Tesla still growing at a 36.7% clip. Toyota's joint venture in China with GAC just terminated 1,000 dispatch workers. Reason? In light of recent production levels. What vehicles do they make at the factory? The Camry, the Levin, and the BZ4X. In a recent interview, RJ Scaringe has said there's far too much greenwashing in the system, people saying they're doing a lot for the sustainable movement without actually doing much. To combat this, Rivian just committed to buying some renewable power from a new massive solar farm with the goal of creating 800 megawatts of energy from this solar farm that Rivian will buy a share of. Rivian has committed to buying 100 megawatts of energy as a virtual purchase power agreement. The clean energy won't actually go to Rivian's cars or the factories or anything like that, but these commitments are like an indirect way of funding these renewable energy projects that may never get off the ground otherwise. I'm sharing though because Rivian said they'll obtain these renewable energy credits from this new solar farm. The company will use those credits to provide a carbon neutral add-on for its customers. Eventually, this will be bundled with every Rivian sale. No details yet, but something to keep an eye on. In case you missed it, there was some confusion out there about the FSD transferability in the event of a private sale. Sounds like Tesla actually amended again the rules around how this will work. Now, the latest news, FSD will stay with the new car in the event of a private sale. Good for all parties. So in Q3, if you sell your Tesla with FSD privately, the new owner will get to keep FSD on that vehicle. This one is a few days old, but India has rejected BYD's proposal for that $1 billion factory in India due to security concerns with respect to Chinese investments in India that were flagged during deliberations. I think many of us here love two things, Tesla and I would guess dogs. With that said, a longtime supporter of the channel and a big fan of Tesla, Jamie, launched his own YouTube channel. He's been training dogs and dog owners now for over 20 years. Awesome guy, I've had the pleasure of chatting with him offline. So if you want a cool guy to chat Tesla or dogs with, go check out Jamie's YouTube channel. It'll be linked below, he's the man. And we have the YouTube channel Met God in the Wilderness saying that production at Fremont has stopped. Maybe Monday, no word on how long the stop may be. But again, Elon told us to expect this in quarter three. You can find me on Twitter at Dylan Loom is 22. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. Please like the video if you did and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.